Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you how to reinstall 700R4 valve body onto your transmission. So the assumption here is that uh, you've taken the valve body off, the spacer plate, the gaskets, etc., to either maybe install a shift kit or try to correct some kind of problem or you just need to replace the valve body end or plate for whatever reason. So uh, we're gonna start with the bare belly. Um, obviously the assumption is the transmission is still in the vehicle. And so we'll go through step-by-step -step on what to do um, when it comes to installing everything else that you know gets bolted to the bottom of the case and so that you know how to do it correctly. So first things you wanna do before you add in check balls or even do anything is lube up uh, the bottom of the case, get the belly all nice and coated with assembly lube. Now, if you're doing this with the um, trans in the vehicle, obviously, you know, transmission fluid is gonna be dripping. So do the best you can to, you know, dab as much of it off with like a shop towel or whatever and, um, and get it to the point where it's, it's not dripping all over you. All right, uh, lube here in the bore for the filter and uh, the bore for the uh, you know converter clutch lockup solenoid. All right, now this is going to be a late model valve body, uh, 1989 model year, so we're going to use a late model configuration insofar as check balls. So here in the little reverse, uh, they started putting a ball here in a capsule in 1987. Uh, you can put this back in or you can leave it out. If you leave it out, it'll give you a little bit more robust apply into a reverse or into manual low. So I'm just gonna leave it out. Uh, this particular transmission is going into like a S10 Blazer with a 350 in it. It's gonna be used for, I don't know, like some sort of circle track dirt car racing or something along those lines. But anyway, uh, here are the check balls as they need to go in. So here's your fourth accumulator. And then your check ball down there, um, that's gonna be for your for your drive three part throttle. And then here's gonna be your one, two and your band exhaust. And then up here, this is uh, where you would have your low detent if this was an early model, but because it's a late model, we're not gonna put the check ball there. All right. So again, when this is upside down, you wanna use some green assembly lube to hold these check balls in place. Obviously, I'm inverted here on the bench, so it's not gonna be an issue, but kind of show you what that looks like. And you just wanna make sure that all your check balls are firmly held in place with this stuff um, so that nothing falls out. Okay, the last check ball, and I put this back in, some builders omit it, but there's a 5 16 check ball that goes right here, uh, and that is the TV exhaust check ball. And the purpose of this check ball is to prevent transmission burnup in the event your throttle valve cable fails and snaps on you, or is so worn out that TV pressures drop below uh, what is minimally required to keep this ball from seeding. So if you're out on the road somewhere, or maybe you're a long way from home, and your TV cable snaps, you don't keep an extra in your vehicle, which by the way, if you R8700R Ford Quip vehicle owner, you want to do that. Always keep a spare TV cable uh, in the uh, in the vehicle with you, as well as a spare governor too. You always want to do those two things because uh, governor, the gears will like to strip and you'll have no upshift from first. Uh, same uh, goes for the TV. If the cable snaps, then you know, you're going to burn up the transmission if you try to drive it. Okay, next thing we're going to do is install the accumulator. So. We're gonna take an old 3-4 accumulator piston um, that's probably worn out to some extent, and we're gonna stick it in the bore, um, legs up, just like that, upside down. Next, we're gonna lube the bore up a little bit more and take your brand new 3-4 accumulator piston, lube it up, and what you wanna do is you wanna make sure the legs on the new piston kinda of mesh or go in between the gaps um, for the legs in the old piston. So just set it in and work it in until it seats all the way. You want it below flush, uh, this little cavity right here. Okay, what this does is it eliminates roughly 85 to 90% of the fourth gear accumulation and will crispen up your 3 4 shift very nicely. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install our gasket. So this is going to be the separator plate to case gasket. and because we're dealing with a late model with an auxiliary valve body, you want to make sure you're using the correct gasket so you have your uh, orange or yellowish, greenish stripe going across like this. 
and if yours is not marked just check over in this area make sure that there's little orifices and ports for your auxiliary valve body okay uh, just for quick reference if you're working with an early model your case gas could look like this in this area in other words just low, you know bowl hole locations that's it no orifices or ports for any auxiliary valve body all right now you're going to lay down your separator plate so just double check, make sure you got everything. Um, do your best to align this up with all the bolt holes and you know ports and everything like that. Okay, I'm just double checking it. Kind of get it as aligned as I possibly could. Uh, I got some bolt holes that are like, you know, partially covered, so. All right, I think that's good. Um, Spacer plate. So again, you want to use a Lee model plate. If you're not sure your spacer plate's damaged, uh, you can always run the Transgo uh, 700P plate. Uh, that will have um, orifices and you know bowl hole configurations, check ball seating locations for every single 700R4 um, iteration when it comes to you know uh, patterns of holes and orifices and whatnot um, that was ever produced. So. Um, you know, there's a couple things you'll have to do based on what specific model or application you're working with to adapt it to your transmission. But bottom line is that case, uh, excuse me, that plate will work with any 700R4 case. All right, notice your Z-bolt locations. There's one here and one here. So get your valve body to case gasket. And then you just want to take some bolts and temporarily thread them in to align your two gaskets with your spacer plate so that everything goes exactly as it should. Kenmore makes like alignment dowels. You can buy them if you, you know, if you want them, but I've always used the bolts and I've never had issues. All right, first thing we're gonna do is install um, or position and install the auxiliary valve body and the one two accumulator housing. So on your auxiliary valve body, you need to have a check ball in this location right here. Uh, real late models, I think 1990 or 91, they started um, enclosing this check ball in like a little capsule. So it's captured, it you know actually can't be taken out. But if you don't have that, just use a whole bunch of green assembly lube to make sure it stays where it needs to be. Okay, for your one two accumulator, you're gonna install it um, spring facing the uh, plate and then your piston inside like this with a new o-ring seal okay now you might see you know some wear patterns here on the plate you can buy uh thick plates that'll go on top and you know they'll have all the orifices and thread threaded bowl hole locations if you want to protect the plate um you know that's up to you i think dana pro built automatics with his shift kits he includes those all right, so for auxiliary valve body, you're gonna have a feed pipe that's gonna go across. Um, and there's gonna be a golden bolt that goes in this location. Don't worry about that right now. Uh, you'll have your eight millimeter bolt right here, and then your two shorter 10 millimeter bolts here. I'm sorry, here. I just told you not to worry about this bolt, and what do I do? I try to install it. Okay, so your accumulator is going to have your real long bolt. Just make sure it threads in, and then you got your other two shorter bolts. All these are 10 millimeter. So at this point, if you're working with a 4L60E, you'd also want to install the wiring harness and the um, TCC solenoid, you know, that whole assembly, but I usually leave that for after the valve body's on in the 700s. So make sure everything's threaded in. You got your aligned uh, gaskets and plate. And then just go ahead and zip things down. For the 700R4, uh, all of your belly bolts, as I'll refer to them, including the pan bolts, take 98 inch pounds. So 98 to 100 inch pounds. Um, I mean, you can go a little bit higher than that, but I wouldn't go too much higher. Uh, I usually stick to 98. It's always worked for me. 
never had issues with anything cross leaks wise or you know stuff breaking all right let me go get the torque wrench we'll torque these down and then we'll go ahead and install the main valve body No particular order on these bolts. And same with the valve body too. The main valve body, there's no particular order. Um, I will generally do center and then kind of work outwards in a spiral pattern, but I'll be honest, that's just a force of habit from you know working on so many other things where there is a, a specific sequence. Okay, um, now that you have everything down, I'll take an eight millimeter and zip that down and torque it, but you can remove your Z bolts. Okay, so for your valve body, for late model units that uh, take an auxiliary valve body, you're going to have your two check balls here. So uh, this is your uh, drive three check ball and your third accumulator or third clutch check ball, excuse me, your third clutch check ball. And this is going to be uh, your low reverse check ball for all the early model units. So if you're working with an 82 to 86 or a valve body, um, it is not paired with an auxiliary valve body. In other words, the case, you know, is not provisioned for it. Then you're going to put a check ball in this location. Okay. Don't leave it out if it needs to be there. All right. Now what we'll do is go ahead and install your manual valve linkage arm and then position it. Yeah. Roughly like that. And then have your manual valve ready. And what you're going to do is you're going to be aiming for that little location right there, that little hole right there. You're going to stick the uh, end of the arm right in there. I'm going to go on the other side a little bit easier. Okay, you may have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to go where it needs to. But otherwise, it'll drop right on. Now, like I said, uh, you know, we're doing this here with the case belly facing up. But if you're doing this uh, with the trans in the vehicle, uh, what I'd recommend you do is just take a floor jack and kind of jack it up and then, you know, ease it into position and then stick a couple bolts to get it started. All right, so you have your center bolt with the washer or spacer or whatever you want to call it. We just wiggle the valve body a little bit until this bites into the threads. And there it goes. And then for auxiliary valve body units, you're going to take your feed pipe and you're just going to get it started. Okay, this end, you may need to take a screwdriver and just tap it in. All right, if the uh, side, uh, you know, that goes into the pump is not wanting to just collapse on its own, no big deal. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your hold down clamp 
and then position it and it's going to go right here and then just get your bolt and get it started. All right, it was a little off kilter, so I had to kind of ease it in there. All right, and then once you have it all the way down, until you get all the rest of the bolts in, just back it off a little bit so you can shimmy the valve body if you need to, like I had to. All right, next, uh, I like to install my so-called golden bolt. Uh, this one actually happens to just have a yellow, uh, you know, yellow bolt head. Grab up the rest of our bolts. Okay, if you have a transmission that's equipped with a sensor or a transmission temperature switch, then you want to make sure that gets installed. Okay, how this works is if this switch uh, detects the trans temperature uh, to exceed a certain threshold, then it will send a signal to the PCM, which <clears throat> will then lock up the torque converter clutch so that uh, temperatures can be reduced. So it's, a, I guess, like a safety mechanism, uh, not too dissimilar from that TV uh, check ball. So a lot of different configurations when it comes to harness uh, and switch, um, you know, switch setups over the years with the 700s. I think the very early models had four switches, and then in '87 they deleted two of them, and then in '88 they deleted all but the the fourth clutch pressure switch. All right, now you have your TV bracket and your little linkage arm. This is gonna. Um, going to link to the TV cable when that gets installed. So it'll just go like this. Okay, just double check. Uh, make sure you have everything where you want it to be. Make sure all your bolts are in and they're all threaded. I think this is not correct. All right, so it goes like this. So you got this port here, and then this switch will go here. All right, sorry about that. Again, it really doesn't matter which one of these you start or, you know, where you start. It just doesn't matter. Okay, we'll do a quick check. If this uh, pipe is still sticking up a little bit here at the pump, just go ahead and tap it down. Now, incidentally, if you have a 700R4 with an auxiliary valve body and you're trying, trying to diagnose a uh, no forward movement condition, uh, what you can do is remove this feed pipe and put compressed air right here. Uh, this is going to be your forward clutch feed. If you put compressed air right there and you can hear that clutch apply, then chances are the problem is in the valve body somewhere. So, um, you know, and this assumes that you know that the transmission is otherwise healthy. All of a sudden you have no forward movement for whatever reason. Um, you can do a quick check right there, pull this pipe off and um, put compressed air. If you hear the clutch applying, then, um, I mean, you could have a burnt, uh, you know, burnt set of forward clutches and it'll, they'll still apply. 
but chances are uh, you'll have uh, signs of that happening where it's slipping or you know um, shaking real bad when you're going to take off all right last is going to be your detent roller so 700 r4 for all 60 e's use the same uh, detent roller 13 millimeter bolt and you're gonna have to like kind of hold this down a little bit while you thread the bolt in I'm not sure what the torque spec on this particular bolt is, but I just use my wrist, nice and tight, and it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, uh, that's the valve body, so now we'll go ahead and we'll do the harness. So just go ahead and lube up your little o-ring here for the uh, TCC solenoid seal. And stick it on in. Two 10 millimeter bolts. And same torque spec, anywhere from 90 to say 104 inch pounds. Okay, as far as routing of the harness, just want to kind of take it through here. Okay, this will go on your fourth clutch pressure switch, and then you'll have your temperature sensor. right there and then you're going to connect your temperature sensor in right there so you're going to basically align this to the uh, you know the little connector um, on the case connector itself All right, now you're just gonna torque everything up the spec. So I'm gonna go 98 inch pounds on everything. So that's what I usually do on these. And like I said, you can go as much as 104. I don't know that I'd go beyond that. And I've seen different specs published for, for these bolts, but you know, I've always owned 98 and I've never had issues. And you always wanna install a new detent cable uh, or TV cable. You never wanna reuse your old one unless you know you replaced it, you know, within the last I would say no more than about 5,000 miles. Maybe 10,000 tops, but they're cheap, 25, 30 bucks. Um, you can get them wherever, Amazon, eBay, uh, you know, local transmission parts supply houses. <clears throat> Just go over and check all your bolts, make sure you got to everything. And that also helps fully compress uh, the two gaskets against the plate, the case, and the valve body. All right, last but not least is the filter. 
and then the pan. And then, you know, obviously after that you're done. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop it here. I mean, the pan is 98 inch pounds on all the bolts, um, 16 of them. So uh, if you're doing this in the vehicle, when you have all of this stuff off of the belly of the case, uh, double check all your bolt hole locations. Uh, check the threads, make sure that none of them are boogered or partially or totally stripped. Um, if they are, just go ahead and do a helicoil repair kit. Uh, the time to do it would be when all this crap is out of the way. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below, and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.